Hello YouTube, this is Frono. Behind me is my improved Chorus fruit farm that I just built here on the Hemisphere server. It's infinitely AF cable and self-sustaining, so it produces more Chorus fruit than it requires. It's modular, so you can build it larger or smaller. The version I built here will produce over 3000 Chorus fruit per hour, or just under two shulker boxes worth, and a surplus of over 100 Chorus flowers. It took me about three hours to build all this in survival, plus of course the time to gather materials including the first chorus flowers. This is an original farm, that is I designed it from scratch. Now as for chorus fruit, there is a very nice farm by Encolia that I'll link in the description that also uses TNT to loot the chorus fruit, but I believe my farm to be easier to build. And pretty much all of the other farms that I saw were either very inefficient so involving manual steps and having low rates, or they were really complex to build. So I designed my own farm, which is reasonably fast to build, while still giving me enough chorus fruit for my purposes. For those of you familiar with the previous version that I designed about two years ago, this farm is improved in two ways. On one hand, I use an additional hopper minecart that I sent in order to pick up all of the chorus fruit dropped on the rails, so this farm has a rather low loss rate. And on the other hand, I improved the item resupply system, which is now very robust. This farm should work in any version of Java Minecraft starting in 1.16, although I have built and tested it in 1.21 only. And the complexity isn't really high. Basically, you just need a few clocks and pulse extenders and just a bit of redstone for the resupply stations. Otherwise, it's very straightforward. But let's look at the farm in the world download. So harvesting chorus plants is of course easily done with water. However, the problem is, of course, that they don't drop any flowers this way. So we, you will only get chorus fruit and nothing to replant. So to get flowers, you can harvest them with an axe, of course. You can shoot them with a bow, which also works if you use dispensers, which allows you to semi-automatically farm chorus plants. Of course, you need to plant them somehow. Or you can just blow them up with TNT. So this will drop the flowers. So TNT it is for our farm, as using arrows would require a painful amount of dispensers and arrows. There are also a few farms where you harvest manually using an axe, but this means you will have only very small plants and this means the rates would suck. Each harvest has three phases. So let's slow down the speed a bit and hit this node block for manual harvest. So first we send a signal up the scaffolding tower, which will activate the TNT dupers here. And I used the good old dupers designed by Scorpio and improved by Ian XO4 for his tree farm. They need two pulses. They are very easy to assemble and we can actually tweak the heights at which they explode by modifying the delay between the pulses. And now the next thing is that we send a minecart but also cut the power to these trapdoors which will start the water and harvest the plants. So the items are flushed down into the water collection down there. Some items will stick to the rails and this is why we sent the hopper minecart to collect these items. So this minecart will end here at an unloading station. All of the items, of course, are flushed into this water stream and here come the items from the unloading stations. And the final step is that we send a player, which I delayed here for a bit. So this minecart will be started automatically. And the player will be supplied with chorus fruit to plant. Then using Twiggeroo fast right click, we'll plant chorus flowers on each of the endstone. So whenever the player goes over a detector rail here, we activate the next resupply station. So there we have an observer clock putting the chorus flowers for the next section into cobwebs. 
and the player requires 22 flowers per section because we have 11 in each row. So we put about 30 flowers in the cob wrap to make sure that the player always have a, has a full stack. The remaining flowers that were not picked up by the player will just fall down into this hopper and be recycled here into this dropper. So we will lose nothing. So the control center of the farm is over here. So first we have a slow running clock that we can enable or disable. And this clock will fire once every 18 minutes or so, which is enough time for the chorus plants to regrow. Once it moves this redstone block, once every 18 minutes, this observer will fire. And we will have two actions. First, we will flip the position of this redstone block so the sticky piston would spit out the redstone block, power this trapdoor, which updates the scaffolding which is detected by this observer here and this re relays the signal to the TNT dupers. We need two pulses for the TNT duper in the right interval and this is done by this circuit here. All right, so that's the signal here. Next we go into a delay circuit. Now this is one of the usual pulse extenders with one sticky piston and one normal piston. And if you update this block here, this redstone torch will be activated a short time later and the time depends on the number of items in here, 0 0.4 seconds for each item. So this is a six second delay. So after six seconds, we will activate this pulse extender and this pulse extender will open these trapdoors and release the water. So within these six seconds, the TNT will be launched. It will break all the chorus fruit that we need and shortly after the launch of the TNT, we will open the trapdoors and flush the water down here. And once this five second pulse extender runs out, we will close the trapdoors again and we have the field to replant the chorus fruit. On the other side, we have two more pulse extenders or delay circuits. So these are exactly the same circuits. The first circuit controls at which time this hopper minecart is sent. So we don't want to clutter the player inventory with chorus fruit. So we first send a hopper minecart and collect all the flowers and fruit that are still left lying on the rails. So this is this delay circuit. Well, this happens after four seconds. And then about 15 seconds later, we send the second minecart with the player. And that's the gist of it. Now I had to solve a few problems on the way. The easiest one was phantom protection. For this, you just place bottom slabs, which are unspawnable for phantoms, but block the light over the tracks. So this shape is exactly the shape of the track where the player goes over the dupers so they don't interfere. Also fairly easy was the separation of minecarts. So we want that the hopper minecart ends up here on this item collection system, which outputs the item in this, into this water stream. The player should end up here. What we use is a string that is observed here and the hopper minecart will just go below the string and trigger nothing. But if a mob, in this case a player, is sitting in a minecart, we'll get a signal here. And if we get a signal here, this crossing will change state for just a moment, just at the right time to send the player here. The most interesting part was to distribute the chorus fruit over the resupply stations. So I think we have about 110 endstone here. So this is just under two stacks. So we certainly need more than one stack in the offhand of the player. But I also wanted a system that is modular so you can build the farm larger. So we have a flexible system that does not depend on the size of the farm. For every back and forth that the railway track snakes, we have a resupply station where we put the chorus flowers into the cobweb and if the minecart with the player goes by, the player will pick up as many chorus flowers as he has room for in the inventory. The station is easy enough. Let's have a look at one in isolation. So this is basically an observer clock that is triggered by this pulse extender. So if we put a minecart in here, this pulse extender will run out. But as long as it's powered, we have this observer clock powering this dropper tower, which moves the chorus fruit from down here to up here. The chorus flowers land in the cobweb 
And again, if the player doesn't pick them up, they will just drop down into this hopper and be recycled in the system, so we lose nothing. And of course we need to put enough of them in a cobweb to supply the player. So each of these comparators in this pulse extender will give us about 7.5 forest fruit. So this setup will give us 30. In this farm we have 11 in each row, so we need 22 to go back and forth. So 30 is more than enough. But if you wanted to scale the system up, build a few more platforms, say 10, then you might have to extend the duration of this pulse extender, for example, by adding two more comparators. I need two cobwebs here, because they are kind of dropped into the middle of the cobweb, so they take about 10 seconds to reach the bottom for the first cobweb, and then 20 seconds to go through the second cobweb. But 10 seconds is not enough for the player to go down the lane and return. So we need a bit more time than one cobweb gives us. The exception, of course, is this last resupply station, because what we do here is we send this minecart here and then we will stop it for a moment. And as long as this pulse extender is running, but as soon as the pulse extender is gone, the minecart will be started again. So here we don't need a lot of delay and we need only one cobweb. The resupply is done using item filters. So here we have a water stream moving both the flowers and the fruit and we have a standard item filter for the fruit. However, I added an additional circuit which reads this dropper here and we have a redstone signal and lock this hopper if we have a signal strength of three or higher. So this hopper wouldn't pick up any more flowers, so these flowers would just go further down the water stream and go to the next resupply station. And this serves two purposes. On one side, it makes sure that not all fruit end up in these droppers instead of going into the storage. So usually we'll have something between 64 and 100 chorus flowers in here, but not more. And on the other side, it's a cheap and easy way to distribute the chorus flowers over these resupply stations. So usually the player will, will pick up 22, so we are missing 22. And if the signal strength falls below 3, then we will pick up more chorus flowers here. Otherwise, they will just go to the next station. So we will supply all of these resupply stations without too much of a buffer. And 60 fruit are enough for two cycles. So what could happen is that all of these resupply stations need the chorus fruit. The fruit end up mostly in the first ones. The last one or two get nothing. So we'll still have 30 items in there. So it's not a problem if a resupply station isn't refilled for one cycle. Now, there are plenty of ways to improve the flower distribution, but in practice the system here is pretty robust and works really well. And it does buffer one and a half stacks of chorus flowers per station, but after a couple of cycles this is no longer a problem. So how do you use the farm? Here's a lever that enables the clock, which is used for the AFK operation. So after enabling the clock, you just go into this minecart, aim at the center of the target block, and use your favorite auto-clicker. Preferably use fast right-click, which is a function that has trickaroo. Just aim there and wait until the clock starts the cycle. And that's it! And now the cycle starts. So there goes the TNT, there goes the first minecart. You might briefly click on this dropper here. If that's a problem for you, you can just cover it with blocks. We start the first resupply station. After we have the items in the cobweb, we have a full stack and we start planting the chorus fruit. Now, it, even with fast right-click, it can sometimes happen that you miss a spot, which depends a little bit on how exactly you aim. If you want to improve that, you should just remove these that are close to a step up. So you should move them maybe to the right one block, which will still work. So there's an option to harvest manually. Maybe the farmer's off and all the chorus plants have grown. Then just click this node block and this will also start a cycle. 
If you have just built this farm for the first few cycles, you might actually run out of chorus flowers, as usually the first one or two riffle stations will suck up all of the chorus flowers. So either you start with some extra chorus flowers to fill up the refill stations at the end of the line, or just check these and maybe take out a few and distribute them over the refill stations further down the line. Of course, feel free to experiment with the layout here. It might be possible to improve the rates quite a bit. You could plant more or less chorus plants, so you could have more endstone, or you could have less. You could space the rails further apart. You could adjust the harvest time by tweaking the amount of items in these droppers here. More items is more time. And you can tweak the height of the TNT explosions by changing the total delay here. Now I did a little experimenting and I think the timing is at least not completely off. So at least for this layout I don't think you can get much higher rates by tweaking the amount of items in there. But I don't know. So if you use a vanilla client then you might actually miss quite a lot of spots because it doesn't click fast enough. You could perhaps change this by just having more of these endstones, so you would try to attempt to place more chorus fruit. So maybe you will plant a few too many. You could just experiment with that. Oh yeah, one thing that can break your farm is if a wandering trader spawns here on one of the platforms and you collide with them. So. I added this little spawning honeypot for the trader with a bell that should hopefully force the trader spawns here. But all in all, this was a fun farm to design and build. And even though there are limited uses for chorus fruit, I mean end rods are really nice, but purple blocks, well, but I can now dominate the market for the purple blocks and end rods here on the server, I guess. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.